What's your name? My name is Dr. Mary Trumpy. And where are you located? I'm located at 900 Wilshire, on the corner of 9th and Wilshire in Santa Monica, on the top floor, Suite 410. And what would you, what, what is your, um, what, what is the name of your organization? It's called Santa Monica Sports Medicine. Okay. And although it's called sports medicine, it doesn't only apply to athletes and people who are sports minded. We can take the general public, someone with a neck pain, back pain, sitting at your desk, or a full on blown out sports injury. You can treat them all. Great. Shall I keep telling you? Yeah, why not? All right, so this is a roller oh. table. This is a device that is actually meant for intersegmental traction. It, as you can see, it rolls up and down like this. Not only is this really a therapeutic device, but it feels really, really good. At the same time when you're on here, of course this helps support the legs to take some stress off the lumbar spine. We can hook up any of your injuries. Let's say you have a sprained ankle, swollen ankle, neck pain. This is a device, it's a physical therapy machine. It is called interferential. It's set at a certain frequency. Actually sends an electrical current through your body, through your muscles, through your tissues, and your body helps reset the normal uh, functioning level of all the tissues. So it helps muscle spasms, because if you're totally spasmed, your muscles are like this. This current runs it through, makes your muscle almost contract, you know, hundreds of times that we couldn't do on our own and it actually helps fatigue out any really, really tight muscles. So that's a really therapeutic device with this. You can use a heat pack at the same time to loosen up any uh, really spasms or you can use ice to help with inflammation. And of course then, we also have the soothing eye pillow. And this smells good. And no one can see you when you have it on them so you can dance around above them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into the uh, weight room. Let's go to the weight room. Want to go through this door? Let's go back around. Let's go this way. Massage room. Back into the gym. Now, this is where all of our rehabilitation therapies, exercise, sports performance, corrective exercise is done here, all right? We, the patients initially come in, they do a full assessment with myself and Harry Mitterbauer, who does the corrective exercise and sports performance. We're able to locate all or most of muscular imbalances. When they are lying on a table, we see what's working, what's not, and then we put them through different movement patterns to see what's functionally working. Because I can isolate your deltoid and it may work fine, but if we put it through a range of motion with a weight, it may not work. Same thing as you may think your legs are working fine, but if we put you in a squatting position, it's amazing how many people are unable to do a squat. They go down, their heels may lift, which shows different tendencies, their knees may come in, which shows tightness, weakness, things like that. So movement patterns are very important in how, how we base our programs and we put people through exercise. Some folks come in, they just really want to, they want to deal with their health issues. They want to get a little, a little less heavy. They want to lose a little weight, work on their cardiovascular. That's, that's very great. We also we support that. But people who have little injuries that, let's say they have that chronic sprained ankle, you know, there's nothing better than having somebody. Okay, better than, there's nothing better than having somebody balance on this bosom ball which challenges all of things called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are little receptors in the bottom of every muscle that tell our brain where we're standing. Right now my feet are telling my brain you're standing on an unequal surface. And so we challenge the, this device, this system, one-legged, of course, I'm not nearly as good as some of our athletes. The really, the well-performing athletes are able to stand here one-legged and do flies with dumbbells at the same time. You can do full squat maneuvers on here. And this, as we all age, we lose some ability. Our proprioceptive systems, they change. We can't, we're less able to stay stable. We're less, we're less focused on our feet. The connection's lost often. 
So it's training on a, on an uneven surface, on a, on a balance board. It really challenges that system, which makes us, you know, let's uh, say we're walking along, we step in a little hole. If we are trained, our body will be like, hey, get out of that hole. If we have lost the ability to have that, we may twist that ankle, we may fall down. So that's, that's an approach to, to um, just one of the approaches that we use with our corrective exercise back here. Balance boards. Um, much of our work is actually done on the Swiss balls. The Swiss balls, for example, this one's kind of, you know, you can do abdominal work to where you are here, help support the core region. Some people actually, you can do push-ups on the ball like this. You can use the Swiss ball to help support the lumbar spine. If a person's rehabilitating from a lower extremity, you can do a squat move like this, which helps take the pressure off the knees if that's one of the problems. So Swiss balls and medicine balls are very good ways to add to performance. In addition to those devices, we have, of course, all of our cardiovascular machines. Nice little view. You can sit here, chat with your partner, look outside, see the view. It's always nice. This is a Smith rack. It's a nice, it works well for any type of athlete, but it's really good for someone. It, you can do, for example, you put a weight on the end out here. You could do an upright row like this. It's very, it's often a very strength building machine, but it has, you can pull a bench underneath it, do a bench press. You can get underneath this device and do a, a lunge or a squat. So this is a, this is a, this is a really well, well used machine that we like to do, especially for strength building. Cable crossovers, any types of adaptations. You can do a row, you can do arms here, uh, any type of for the ankle, for inner outer, there's a lot of imbalances. We're so, we're so like this with our world. We're always forward, we're always desk work, we're a little anxious in today's world, we're always here. So, you know, everyone needs to open, strengthen the chest, open here, take some pressure off, and strengthen the mid-back. That'll help pull us back, help our posture, help open everything here, take pressure off the neck and the back. That's very important for people who have neck injuries, sit at their desk all the time. Um, this, is, this is just an overall of the gym here. Um, let's see what else would I like to show you back here. Dumbbells, of course, these are neat little weighted bars. You know, it takes the stress out. You can do bicep curls. These are mainly strength building exercises, but you know, our Specialists back here are able to do lots of other things. Some folks, um, for example, if you have a really weak lower leg, you could actually do a movement where this helps, this helps strengthen the hip without having to be in a weight-bearing position. For example, people who may be dealing with some hip issues, the rehabilitation may not want to be weight-bearing. So we are able to provide any type of exercise lying on the ground. A really fantastic thing is this thing called a foam roller. This foam roller is really quite firm, right? Anyway, what you do is it helps loosen and, and lengthen areas that might be very tight. For example, this band, it's called the IT band on the side of our legs, becomes very, very tight on runners, athletes, everyone comes all the way here to the knee, and a lot of tightness here can actually cause knee pain, knee injuries. If this is too tight, it'll eventually at some point pull the kneecap to the side. Abnormal patellar tracking, which is kneecap tracking, pulls to the side, abnormal wear and tear, cartilage worn out, eventual knee problems. The solution, one solution, lengthen here, strengthen here, pull everything back. That can be done using this foam roller. And this is just an example of how you do it. You slowly push yourself along the foam roller. 
The key is to go very, very slow. If I go like this, it feels like it's working, but what you need to do is actually hold the foam roller for 30 to 45 seconds on a region that's very tight. For example, as I roll down my leg right there, it becomes painful. So what I need to do is actually allow my leg to sink into that foam roller, into that really thick ligament, the IT band, and it will eventually relax. And you just scoot your whole leg down here. So foam rolling is, it's, it's a slightly new approach in the exercise fitness world over the last you know, 10 years, but it's really a mainstay is helping people. You can do the front of your quads, as well as getting up into this hip region, which is really hard to get. In the past, people might actually use like a tennis ball and roll on it to get into their glutes and upper hips, but this can allow you to get to all the regions that you didn't even know you needed to get to. Like right here is very painful, so you want to relax into this. So foam rollers are good. You can do pretty much all areas of your body, not really your neck, but that is, this is a very good um, adjunct to what we have. Uh, there are bands, these bands can go up here. You can do a pulling move like that. Um, one, a lot, of our, a lot of our rehab is really focused on, on balance and imbalances because, you know, a big, strong, muscular guy may come in and say, I'm strong as could be, but you put him through some functional patterns, and if he were to do a squat maneuver, for example, he, if he were to go here or she, and the upper body fell down, like this, it shows that too tight here, not enough strength in the back. So a person like that, for example, would really need to do some very, very specific, almost non-weight-bearing exercises, which would be more like this, to really focus with the mid-back. And you can take a guy that's, or a guy or a girl that's really muscular and strong, and you put them through some movements like that, and they will fatigue. And it's good because many people are afraid to be weak, and everybody wants to be strong, but we don't focus on weaknesses or strength. We focus on, focus on imbalances because as I stand here, I am being held up by muscles that are each at a different length. For example, as I stand here, I think my hamstrings are firing while my quadriceps are not, and it balances so that I'm standing upright. If they weren't working, I would fall down. And so with repetitive movements, repetitive patterns where we do the same thing over and over and over, we will cause an imbalance. If you're like this on your mouse all day, eight hours a day, you're gonna, something's going to shorten this and something's going to lengthen. Then you go back to your normal life, and this shoulder, it may only come forward this much, but all it takes is this much to pinch a nerve, to cause neck pain, to cause elbow pain, to cause atrophy in the muscles in the back. And then eventually, if this guy is always here 10, 20 years, it's going to take 10, 20 years of the opposite movement to pull it back. So those are very important things when I look at a person. Like, why is this person's muscles shortened all the time? For example, I always tell people that have neck pain when they sleep, Make sure, you know, you can be all snuggled up, and it doesn't matter what position you're in, I guess, you know, I shouldn't be liberal with that, but sleep what you're comfortable. Just make sure you're not all snuggled up. Because if you're snuggled up like this, the shoulder, it's going to be shortened all night long. And since you're sleeping, it's not tight. But you wake up and you go, oh, it falls down, gravity pulls, yet you've been five, six, seven hours like this, your body doesn't know where it should be. So that's kind of, I always tell everybody to lengthen the muscles right before you fall asleep. Make sure nothing's really too constricted. Same thing with your, if you're sleeping with your elbows bent all the time, there's going to be some compression on the nerves. That's often why people wake up, their hands are asleep. They straighten their elbows, shake it out, and you're good to go. So that's just a little tip before you fall asleep. Make sure you're not too contorted and a little relaxed. So um, that's looking pretty good back here. Let's go, let's go over this direction.